Chapter 3 of Dragonling Derek struggled to close the barn door, pushing the dragonling back in. You've got to wait here, he said, and don't make a sound. Wrong, said the dragon. You don't understand, said Derek. They'll kill you if they find you. He gave a final push, then pulled the door tight and lowered the latch. He could hear the orphan's muffled whimpers on the other side. He had to hurry or someone else might wake and hear. Derek crept up to his room, dressed quickly, then tiptoed down to the back room where the weapons were kept. He slung his bow over his shoulder and strapped his quiver of arrows in place. On his way through the kitchen, he filled a sack with supplies. It would be a journey of many days. Suddenly, he stopped and wondered, what do dragonlings eat? Perhaps such a young one would still need milk. He would have to bring along a female yuke. Dorlas, whose calf had been born dead, had milk to spare, but she would not nurse a dragonling. Derek packed a water skin so he could feed the creature by hand. Derek paused in the kitchen doorway and looked back. His stomach twisted into a knot. What was he doing anyway? What would his father say? Risking his life to save a dragon? An enemy of his people? A dragon that he might even have to face one day on his own dragon quest? He could still turn back. It was not too late. Perhaps he should just let the creature be found and killed. After all, what more did a dragon deserve? Derek walked slowly out to the barn. The soft hiccuping sound still came from inside. He opened the door and the dragonling rushed out and rubbed happily against him. Thrum, 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 it said. Derek stroked its scaly head. Oh, why did you have to come here, he whispered. Then he looked over at the lifeless body of the great blue. I guess it wasn't your idea either, was it? Come then, I'll take you home. But after that, I never want to see you again, understand? The dragon link thrummed happily. Derek took out another lump of sugar and let the orphan lick it from his hand. The sky was slowly growing lighter. Come on, said Derek, we've got to go. He led Dorlis out of the paddock. She was skittish around the dragonling. It kept running in and out between her legs, making her buck and jump while Derek was trying to get her saddle pack strapped on. Cut that out, said Derek, giving the dragonling a gentle kick. Ronk, 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 it screeched. And it half ran, half flew back up to its mother's body and dove into her pouch. Derek finished securing the saddle. Then he led Dorlas over to the Great Blue. Hey, he whispered, come on out of there. He saw a lump wiggle around in the pouch, but the dragonling did not appear. Come on, don't be such a baby, Derek coaxed. I hardly even touched you. The dragonling poked its head out. Ronk, it said. I am sorry, said Derek. I thought dragons were tough. He held out another piece of sugar, and the dragon crept slowly down again. Derek fed it and scratched its head until it was thrumming happily. Some fighter you are. You're going to some fighter you're going to make, he whispered. Derek led Dorlis out to the road. The dragon link followed. You're going to have to move faster than that, said Derek, if we're going to get to the pass before sunrise. He ran forward a few steps and then called to the dragonling. It flapped its wings and flew up to catch up, and flew to catch up. Running and calling, running and calling, Derek managed to get to the foothills just as the first rays of sun peeked over the mountaintops. Suddenly, the little dragon turned back. Where are you going? yelled Derek. He ran after the dragonling and grabbed it gently by the wings. It struggled to get away. Ronk! It squawked. Ronk! 
it was staring back down the hill at the body of its mother. Derek stroke his, stroked its head. I know, he said, it's wrong. And that is chapter three of Dragonling.